This is lesson three in chapter one for calculus. We are reviewing a lot of algebra today. So we're going to be evaluating, simplifying, factoring, solving um, a lot of expressions and equations. <clears throat> okay, we're going to start with the exponent laws. These are going to be really um, prevalent in this course. So let's review. Uh, we have three examples here. Okay, so um, first example, we are going to combine these powers using the exponent laws and then evaluate. Um, first thing we want to do is combine the powers in the denominator. So when you're multiplying two powers of the same base, we add the exponents. So this would change the expression to 2 to the power of negative 7 over 2 to the power of negative 2, since 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. Okay, now we're going to use exponent law number two, which is when we're dividing um, two powers, we subtract their exponents when they have the same base. So let's subtract those numbers. Negative seven minus negative two is negative five. Okay, lastly, we need to evaluate this. So a negative power, just a reminder, that means we are evaluating the reciprocal. So it's the same as one over two to the power of five. And 2 to the power of 5 is 32. If you multiply 5 twos together, you get 32. So that's the final answer, 1 over 32. Okay, next question. We've got a lot of decimals here. Um, I always tell students when you've got to evaluate a power with decimals, change those decimals into fractions, and it becomes a lot easier, especially if you can't use a calculator. Okay, so let's change both of those decimals to fractions and see what we've got. So 0 0.09 is 9 over 100, and negative 1.5 is negative 3 over 2. Okay, let's deal with this negative power by using the reciprocal of the base. That's what a negative exponent means. It means we can take the reciprocal to the power of 3 over 2. So I've just flipped that base. Um, note, a common mistake here is that students also flip the exponent. You don't want to do that. You just flip the base when you have a negative power. Okay, next we have to remember our law for how we convert a fractional exponent into a root. So the number in the denominator here, that two, it becomes the index of our root. So we're gonna do the square root, which has an index of two. We don't typically write the two here, but there is a two here. So we're gonna do the square root of 100 over nine, all to the power of three. So notice that the three just stays as the exponent there. So let's evaluate now. So the square root of 100 over nine is 10 over three, and we're evaluating this to the power of three. So that's gonna be 1,000 over 27. So you should be able to do these without a calculator. Okay, last one. We're not gonna be able to evaluate this one because it's just involving x, but we can combine those. Before we combine them, we need to change them back into exponents. So here we have a square root all to the power of three. So let's change that back into an exponent. It would be three over two. And then this one here would be the cube root of x becomes one third. So just a quick reminder again that the index becomes the denominator in your exponent. Okay, now let's add these together. The rule for multiplying two powers with the same base is you add the exponents. 3 over 2 plus 1 over third, 1 over 3. If you change those to like denominators, we get 9 over 6 plus 2 over 6, which is 11 over 6. So in the end, this would be x to the power of 11 over 6. Okay. Um, let's go to the next section. So those are all the reviews of the exponent laws. Next section, we are reviewing how to multiply polynomials. Again, this will be very useful in this course, so we're going to practice it. Um, first one is a common mistake students make. They just want to square both terms in the brackets, but that's not how we multiply polynomials. Let's write it out this way instead. It's a lot easier to do. Right? So squaring just means multiply that twice. And now we're going to remember to FOIL. So this 3 needs to get multiplied to both terms in the other bracket. And then this negative 5x also needs to get multiplied to both terms in the other bracket. So I'm going to end up with four terms altogether. Two from the yellow 3 and then two from the pink negative 5. 
Okay, let's go ahead and write those down. And then there's going to be some like terms to combine. So 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times negative 5x is negative 15x. Now we're going to go ahead and do the pink terms. Negative 5x times 3 is negative 15x. And negative 5x times negative 5x is 25x squared. All right, so we've got all our terms from our foiling done. Now we're just going to go ahead and put these like terms together. So we get 9 minus 30x plus 25x squared. And there's our final answer. Okay, next one. Um, this is actually three things being multiplied together here. So we've got x plus 1, x minus 4, x minus 4. Now you can pick any two to multiply together first. I'm going to multiply just the first, uh, just these two together. You can pick, it doesn't actually matter. Um, I'm going to multiply this and this, and then I'm going to multiply the negative 4 with these two. Um, we're going to leave the x plus 1 for now. Okay, so when I FOIL all that out, I'm going to combine my like terms together. So negative 4x times negative, or plus negative 4x would be negative 8x, and then negative, or positive 16, sorry. Okay, so now that I've multiplied the first part, I'm going to multiply the second part. So I'll use a different two colors. I have this x, it's going to get multiplied to all three terms, and then I have this 1, it's going to get multiplied to all three terms. So I'm going to end up with six terms all together. Three from the green x and three from the purple one. Let's see what I get. So I have x cubed, I have negative 8x squared, I have positive 16x, and then I have x squared, negative 8x, and positive 16. Now I just need to combine like terms together to write my final answer. The x cubed doesn't have any like terms. For x squared, we have two like terms. We get negative 7x squared. And then for the x terms, we have two as well. Uh, that gives us 8x. And we have positive 16. So that's our final answer here. OK, and last but not least. So um, I would recommend if you if you understand this, you can just zoom ahead on the video and try this on your own maybe and then check back with the answer key or you can do it with me. I'm going to go a little bit faster this time. So um, we're going to foil both of these out. I'm just going to write it out the long way so we can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to foil that expression out and then I'm going to foil this expression out, the x minus 3 squared. Um, so let's foil out in blue there the first one. So I'll have 2x squared minus 14x minus 1x. So that's minus 15x. I'm combining the like terms all in one step. And then negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7. Okay, so that's the first one foiled out. And I'm leaving them in brackets for a reason because I'm going to subtract here. And then we'll have x squared minus 6x plus 9. Okay, time to combine like terms, and we have to keep in mind that we're subtracting these polynomials. And this subtraction, a common mistake students make, is they forget that this applies to all of the terms in that second bracket. Okay, so we get x squared, um, negative 15x minus negative 6x, so that would be negative 9x, and then 7 minus 9 would be negative 2. So that's our final answer there. Okay, good. So moving on to factoring, or sorry, simplifying fractions, but it does involve factoring too. Okay, so um, I've picked some tricky ones here. We're going to be dealing with a lot of fractional expressions in this course, so it's good to know some tricks for simplifying fractions. First thing to always do if you can is factor. Okay. Um, factoring helps us cancel things out. You're only allowed to cancel things once we're in factored form. So um, it's a really good idea if you can factor, factor. Okay, so in the numerator in this expression, I do see this is a difference of squares. So I'm going to factor it. It would be x minus 7, x plus 7. In the denominator, um, there's nothing to factor, but I do see it's almost 
kind of like the x minus 7, but it's flipped around. So what we can do is factor out a negative 1. And when you factor out a negative 1, it just flips the signs. So instead of 7 minus x, it becomes x minus 7. Now we can see that two factors are the same, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. We can go ahead and cancel those out. Before I cancel those out, though, I want to write any non-permissible terms. Um, so when we are when we have a fraction, we are not allowed to divide by zero. So anything that's going to make this denominator zero, I'm going to put here, cannot equal zero, um, is a non-permissible term. So in this case, if x was seven, that would make the denominator zero. So we need to say that x cannot equal seven. That's our non-permissible value for x here. Okay, now we're allowed to cancel this out, and we get x plus 7 over negative 1. Um, a simpler way to write that would just be negative x minus 7. Just divide both of those numbers by negative 1. Okay, um, and the non-permissible value is also part of our final answer. So just a tip here, you need to do your non-permissible values before you cancel or else um, you'll miss some. Yeah. Okay, this one. Um, we are dividing, so it's like negative 3x minus 9, and then we're dividing by this fraction here. So another way to think about this is it's like negative 3x minus 9 divided by x squared minus x minus 12 all over x. Okay, and when you divide by a fraction, uh, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to change this around. I'm also going to factor everything because we said we should factor before. So it's, it's going to look like this, negative 3x plus 3. So I factored out a negative 3 there, times x over, and then I'll factor that one. It's x minus 4x plus 3. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and decide what my non-permissible values are. So those are going to be, there's going to be three of them. We cannot have x being 0 because that would make that denominator 0. We also can't have x minus 4 or x plus 3 being 0 because then that denominator would be 0. So we have three non-permissible values. It would be 0, 4, and negative 3. Any of those being 0 would make a denominator 0, which is not allowed. Okay, let's go ahead and cancel now. So we have a common factor here, which is x plus 3. That can get canceled out, so our final answer is going to be negative 3 times x all over x minus 4. And those non-permissible values are part of our final answer. I'm going to write them there. Okay, last one does not involve any factoring, but I want to show you something that you can do in a case like this. When you see that um, the root x and root x, a lot of students want to say, oh, like, I can cancel those because one's in the numerator, one's in the denominator, but you can't because the root x is not in every single term. See, it's not in this orange term over here. So we can't cancel it out, but what we can do um, is write this as two separate fractions. So when you only have one thing in the denominator, you can split it up into two fractions. The reason you can do that is because you could simply put it back together again. Because if you have the same denominators, you can put those fractions back together. Um, and then this allows us to simplify this fraction really nicely. Um, and we can also simplify this one too. Um, okay, the other thing we should do here is write our non-permissible values. So we're not allowed to have zero in the denominator and we're also not allowed to have any negative numbers inside a square root. So our non-permissibles here Basically, x cannot be negative or 0, so x has to be positive. So x has to be greater than 0 in this question. Okay, uh, let's simplify. So here, root x over root x would just be 1. And here, x, this could be written as x to the power of 1 over x to the power of half. And we can subtract those powers. So it would just be x to the power of half or root x. So there you go. There's the simplified answer. I'll just put this little extra piece here. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then x is greater than zero would also be part of my answer. All right. Two more sections to go. 
feel free to skip ahead at any time if you feel like you already know it. It's supposed to be a review, so if you do know a particular section, you don't have to watch it. Okay, um, factoring, really important skill to be able to do. The first thing you want to always do if you're factoring is take out any common factors. I'm going to put this at the top. A lot of students forget to do that and then they get stuck. Um, so every single one, actually the first two have a common factor. So in this first one, there is a two that can be divided out of every term. So I'm going to take out a two, uh, 16. And then we're going to factor here. So we solve this little puzzle, which is like, we want to find two numbers that multiply to negative 16 and add to negative six. So those numbers would be negative 10 and, oh no, sorry, not negative 10, negative eight and positive two, right? Because negative eight times two is negative 16. Negative eight plus two is six. So we found them. Now that's it. This only works, this little puzzle, when your coefficient in front of the x squared is a one. Okay, then we can go straight to the answer when we're factoring, but we'll see in the last example that doesn't work. Um, okay, next one, common factor, take it out. There's a three that can be divided evenly out of both terms. And then this is called a difference of squares. So this would be x plus four, x minus four. Okay, that's done. Lastly, um, we have no common factor here and this number is not a one. So there's three or four different methods, methods for factoring um, polynomials like this. You can use whatever method you're comfortable with. There's guess and check, there's slide and divide, there's magic X, um, there's decomposition. So use the method you're comfortable with. I'm gonna do magic X here because um, that's the one I do with my students. But if you have a different method that works, totally go ahead and use it. Okay, so for magic X, what we wanna do is multiply A and C together. So in this one, I see that that is three times negative 20, which would be negative 60. And then we're gonna write the other number, the negative 28 right here. So we're gonna solve this puzzle. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 60 and add to negative 28. So I can see that those numbers would be negative 30 and positive two, right? Because those two multiply to negative 60 and they add to negative 28. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is divide by the three and reduce. Okay, so this one reduces to negative 10 over one and this one doesn't reduce at all. Okay, now we're, re go now we're ready to write our factors. Um, I'll do this one first. The one goes in front of the X and then the 10, negative 10 goes here. Same over here, the three will go in front of the X and then the two, the numerator will go here. Okay, so let's write those in. So it'd be one X minus 10. And then this one will be 3x plus 2. You can go ahead and expand that and just double check my work, but it should expand to 3x squared minus 28x minus 20. Um, again, if you have a different method that you like to use to factor, then go ahead and use that. Okay, lastly, solving equations, another important skill that you need to know how to do. Okay, so three different types of equations here. This first one, it's important to kind of categorize in your mind, like, okay, what type of equation is this and what are the strategies I can use to solve? So this one here, the first one, let's kind of categorize each first and then I'll solve them. This first one only has X terms, it's a linear equation. When you have a linear equation, all you wanna do is isolate for X. What I mean by that is get all the X's on one side, all the numbers on the other side just by using opposite operations. Okay, this one is quadratic, has a power of two on the x there. It's a quadratic equation. In pre-calculus 11, you spend a lot of time learning different methods to solve quadratic equations. Um, the most common ones is you wanna use the quadratic formula or solve by factoring. For both of these methods, you wanna get your polynomial 
looking like this, get one side equal to zero and move all the terms to the other side. And then you can choose. You can choose to factor if it's factorable or you can use the quadratic formula. Okay, and then last one is a radical equation. It has a square root in it. So what you wanna do in this case is isolate the radical and then square both sides. Okay, so let's go through each one. Again, you can skip ahead if you feel like you know one of them. The first one you would have learned back in like grade eight and nine, and then used probably throughout your math courses since then. Um, first thing I'm gonna do here is just multiply this three in. I'm gonna expand three X minus six. And then I'm gonna move all the X's to one side. You can choose which side. I'll just keep everything positive and move these seven X terms to that side. So I have six equals 10 X minus six. And then I'm going to slowly move in two, two separate steps my numbers to the other side. So I'll have 12 equals 10 X. And then the opposite of multiplying by 10 is dividing by 10. So I get 1.2 equals X. There we go. Okay, next, do, next we have our quadratic equation. So first we wanna get everything on one side and then set it to zero. So I'm gonna move those terms, the 60 X, I'm gonna subtract them and move them to the left-hand side. Next thing I notice everything can be divided by five. So as long as you do something to the same thing to both sides of the equation, you're not changing the equation at all. So I'm gonna make my life easier by dividing by five here. And I've noticed that this is easily factorable. So I'm gonna factor it, but you could use the quadratic formula to solve it too, um, but I'm gonna factor it. So two numbers that multiply to negative 13 add to negative 12 would be negative 13 and one. So there are two numbers, two values of X that would make this equation equal to zero. Those would be X equals 13 or X equals negative one. So there's actually two solutions to that equation. Okay, and last one. Here we're gonna isolate the radical. So what I'm gonna do to both sides is subtract by four. So I have square root of three X minus two equals X minus four. And then I'm gonna get rid of that square root. So the opposite of the square root operation is to square both sides. And we're gonna expand that right hand side. So the square and the square root cancel each other. So I'm just left with three X minus two. And on the right hand side, I'll have X squared minus eight X plus 16. We actually did a bunch of those squaring operations earlier in the first section or second section maybe it was. Okay now I notice hey this is actually a quadratic equation so I'm going to have to use the same strategies I just used in the previous one. So I'm going to move everything to the right hand side and set the left hand side equal to zero. So I'll have x squared minus 11x um, and then add to 18. Okay now I'm looking for two numbers. I'm gonna solve by factoring again. I prefer to solve by factoring, but some people prefer the quadratic equation. So I found my two numbers. My solutions are X equals nine and X equals two. Now you should check that these work, radical equations can have extraneous roots that make a negative radicand for the square root. Um, so you should verify these. Uh, I think both, just verifying in my head right now, both um, the second one does not work. So two is an extraneous root here, but nine, six minus two is four, four plus, yeah, the nine does work. So it's just X equals nine as a final solution. Yeah, the two is an extraneous root. If you plug in the two, you'll see three times two minus two plus four. This doesn't work because this would be square root of four plus four and that does not equal two. Um, so yeah, that's an extraneous root. So there's only one solution for that one, x equals nine. All right, that's the end of the lesson. Hope that helps.